I'm Barb, and this is Knitted Squares, where we are intentional, interwoven, and influencing the world for Jesus. Every week, it's my pleasure to share insights I've gleaned from God's Word, along with practical tips and strategies for implementing them into our lives that we might grow increasingly closer to Jesus. Hey, if you're new here, welcome. I am so glad that you've joined us. I hope that you'll consider subscribing and that each of you will like and share this episode with others who would enjoy or need this message. Last week, I launched a series of puzzled episodes. This week, I'm puzzled about the confusion caused by the LGBTQIA acronym and all the implications. It's really not complicated, so join me in a moment to solve this puzzle derived from the answer to the serpent's ancient question, did God really say? Last week, I told you about my three-week experience with this puzzle. Since it turned out that it wasn't a fun challenge for anyone in my family but me, I puzzled alone and I had a lot of time to think. Several truths became clear as I puzzled, and this week I want to unpack another one of those with you. I was thinking I'd put this particular one off for a couple weeks as long as I could, if I ever got to it, because it's a hot button issue in cultures around the world today. Whether that culture is in the West or in the United States or up in Europe, or it's in developing nations, like Botswana, where Western philosophy and ideology have taken or are taking root, the issue of sexuality will at best confuse a room and at worst sharply polarize it. Sexuality hasn't always been confusing because, spoiler alert, it's not. Let me demonstrate what I mean with this little puzzle right here that I picked up in South Africa over Christmas. Most of you are probably familiar with puzzle protocol. In fact, it's so obvious that puzzles don't even come with instructions. All you have to do is connect interlocking pieces that only fit one way in one place in the puzzle. And it's easiest, I'd say best practice but not law, to put the border together first. To do this, you first sort out all the edge pieces from the inside pieces. And now you have all the pieces that you need to frame the task ahead. These are the boundaries. All the other pieces will fit perfectly inside these well-established clear boundaries. Through time and patience, a beautiful picture will emerge of various colors and shapes and sizes as each piece finds its place interlocked with those around it. Now. This one right here, it's a simple child's puzzle. Only 120 pieces, so not to overwhelm young puzzlers. And there's just 22 edge pieces, 18 straight ones, and four corners. Ready, set, go. See, in just a few minutes, bada bing, the boundary of the puzzle is clearly defined. But what would happen if a child were presented with only one kind of edge piece? What if I give him just the knobbed edge pieces? How far would he get in framing his puzzle? How long would he stay at the task? I think it would take less than a minute, probably just a few seconds, for him to see that there is no way that, he, that it can work. He would determine something's not right here and walk away to find his Legos. So, well, maybe we could just give him the socket pieces. Maybe that will yield better results. You can see that this is a ridiculous, pointless exercise, except for it illustrates the point exactly. See, for thousands of years, families have been the bedrock of every society and culture. Men and women fall in love, get married, and produce children. Science and woke progressives are complicating something that is so basic and simple, even children get it. Knobs and sockets. That's how puzzle pieces fit together. There's no other way to complete the puzzle. Knobs and knobs will never work. Sockets and sockets will never work. In the human race, there is male and female, two sexes, two genders, period. Now, there's also lots of confusion and lots of perversion, but friends, there's only one truth, male and female. This is how families and cultures are built and maintained. For some, this is a really hard truth, and I am not trying to be harsh or ugly at all. I dearly love all people because every person bears the image of God. But some people, and increasingly more vocal, don't ascribe to the truth because they don't feel it's right. 
For others, it's a hard truth because they themselves don't feel right. And rather than align with truth and change what's misaligned, they've set about on a global campaign to change truth. Back in 2015, I received a call and an invitation that took me way out of my comfort zone. The University of Botswana was hosting a debate in tandem with the LGBTQ student organization. And they wanted two conservative pastors to debate two liberal pastors on the question, is the existence of transgender people wrong in the eyes of God? What they were asking or saying essentially was, tell us we can be whomever we want to be or feel like being because after all, we are all God's children and he loves us all and we need to know that we are okay to be okay. I did not want to accept this invitation because I in no way consider myself an expert or authority on this issue and yet I knew this was an assignment from God. One thing the pastor inviting me didn't know when he felt impressed to call me is that I had just completed a 24 page paper for my master's degree on the topic of homosexuality which is a close cousin of transgenderism, both sexual perversions. In fact, I had just submitted the paper to my professor the night before I received this call. In order to write the paper, I combed the scriptures and researched much of the relevant literature to find truth. And honestly, I was a little afraid of what I would find because what if the progressive theologians were right and my careful, honest inquiry revealed that God created and affirms multiple expressions of sexual being? If what I've known in my heart since childhood, that there are boys and girls and men and women, wasn't actually true, then where would that leave me? Where would that leave the world? If something as basic as sexuality could be twisted and sold as God-approved modifications, what other long-settled doctrinal truths were also on the table and up to public debate? Like I said, even for children, it's common sense that there are boys and girls. Kids have to be brainwashed of what's intuitive and taught to think something else. Children instinctively know how to fit pieces together. There's no science involved. There's no training required. There's no manuals. You take the pieces, you fit them together. Even though I had some questions and fear, I could not let fear of what I might find, uncover, or discover keep me from doing the research and writing what I found. I knew of several minister friends across multiple denominations who had searched the scriptures and come up with drastically different conclusions than those tenets on which societies and cultures have been based since the beginning. I had to know the truth. I'm a minister of the gospel. If I don't preach truth, then I need to abandon my calling and find something else to do. The fear was real, but I pressed on knowing God's promise to guide me into all truth. Jesus said, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Never be afraid of the truth. During the research phase, I read the relevant biblical passages. I looked he up Hebrew and Greek words for original meanings and how they were used in context. I read various translations and commentaries. I listened to podcasts. I read books and articles from people of faith on both sides of the issue. And yeah, I read some compelling arguments for inclusive, affirming theology. But at the end of the day, at the end of the writing, the truth was crystal clear. For all the fog, the lighthouse beamed the way to safe harbor. The compass of the word of God pointed true north. In the beginning, God created them male and female. In his image, he created them. And he told them to be fruitful and multiply. And just like a toddler with zero education and a box of Duplos, Adam and Eve got busy being fruitful and building a family. God had made it so clear in human anatomy, there was no way to mix it up. Only when sin entered did confusion and perversion begin. Because that is what sin does to everything. It confuses and perverts. Well, two weeks after the phone call invitation, the much-awaited and anticipated evening of the debate came. I went to the university hall armed with rock-solid truth and confidence in God to help me represent him well. And I was shaken in my boots to take on such learned opponents in this academic forum. What I knew, I knew, but as with anything that we are discussing with anyone ever, it's not what we know, 
It's how we share what we know. Jesus told us to be salt and light. As his servants, we are to speak the truth in love. At no point do we ever get a pass to be disrespectful, rude, or unkind. Everything that came from my heart past my lips had to come with genuine love for Jesus and the people in front of me that he died to save. Speak the truth in love. Neither one can be compromised. Well, that night a small group of about 100, 100 people turned out. Students had come ready for a fight, a heated debate, coached and prepared with their scientific, intellectual, and anecdotal, anecdotal thoughts and questions to stump the pastors. The MC, clearly a man, as evidenced by his full beard, deep voice, and masculine body, told everyone right up front not to address him as sir, but to call him it. I thought, oh boy, this is going to be a long night. But as the night progressed and the questions came, I felt the peace and presence of Jesus to speak truth gently but authoritatively. Several times I reminded those in the room of how much God loves each one, but his word speaks with unity and clarity on the truth that God created male and female, and marriage is between one man and one woman. Because the tone was non-combative from Pastor Sam and I, there was no fight to be had. The liberal progressive pastors on the other side of the table flaunting their flowing robes and vestiges had nothing substantive to present. At one point, MC It tried to get something going by saying, students, I know you came with questions, ask them. But for the most part, they kept quiet. God's peace prevailed, truth prevailed. The night concluded and God was glorified. Even to this day, people will come up to me and talk about that night remembering how God used Pastor Sam and I to tell people of his love, not by telling them what they wanted to hear according to how they felt, but what they needed to hear, the truth regarding sexuality and of God's eternal love and compassion for people, even in the midst of their very real confusion and struggle. He wants them to come to the knowledge of the truth and be set free to be who he created them to be. Friends, this debate is going on all around you, no matter where in the world you are. It's in primary, junior, and senior high schools. It's on every college campus, Christian and secular. It's in the workplace, the marketplace, and loud and proud in the entertainment industry. And yes, it's in the church too, causing confusion, wreaking havoc, and dividing congregations, even entire denominations. God's call to us is crystal clear. Know the truth. Speak the truth in love. We will be accused of being bigoted, intolerant, and worse. But be of good cheer. Jesus has already overcome the world. And as we stand firm in him and contend for truth, we will overcome as well. If you want to educate yourself on this issue and gain more clarity on why you believe what you believe, I will make my paper entitled, Did God Really Say? available on my website under the downloads tab. I'll put the link to it in the description below. At the end of my paper is about two and a half pages with all the resources I cited, so you can go deeper by accessing those books and articles as well. I also recently heard an interview by a former lesbian, Janet Boynes, whose ministry and calling it is to help as many as she can know the truth and find freedom in Christ. Her new book, God and the LGBT Community, is just out, and I'm going to also provide a link to it along with her called out international website in the description below. The book is so new I haven't even read it yet, but I'm looking forward to doing so in order to stay current with as much info as I can get in order to help others. I'm also going to provide a link to the TV show of Flashpoint on the Victory Channel where I heard Janet speak. If you want to reach out to me, for prayer or to talk, I'm available to you. I'm not looking to argue or get ugly with anyone, just to affirm what I know to be true and to pray with you. My links are also in the description below. Let's pray together right now. Father, I come to you in the mighty name of Jesus, and I give you thanks and praise for who you are. You're holy and you're righteous and you're true, and you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Thank you for this amazing world that you made for us and for creating us and breathing into us the breath of life. There is no breath on the planet that doesn't come from you. And for that, you are worthy of all the worship and honor and glory. In your wisdom, you created humans 
male and female, to fellowship with us and to bear your image among all creation. God, each of us is infinitely valuable to you. But we know the devil has come to confuse and to steal and to kill and destroy with his insidious lies and his perversions and his deceptions. I thank you that your word is truth and that you have made it known to us. Thank you, God, for the unity and clarity with which the scriptures speak on our sexuality. I pray for everyone watching to see the truth for what it is. May each one accept it as divine, unalterable truth and seek to align their hearts and lives with it. There is no other path to life. All other paths lead to destruction. Holy Spirit, overshadow every seeking heart and reveal yourself as the God who created, knows, loves, saves, delivers, heals, and redeems. You are the God who calls us by our name, not by our shame. I pray for all of, all of us followers of Jesus, knit together in you, that we would stand firm for truth in these perilous times. God, help us not to bend, bow, or break under the pressure. May we use all the spiritual weapons that you have given us, and having done all to stand, we stand firm. Grant that we would truly be salt and light in our communities and families. Give us the grace and wisdom to confidently speak the truth in love, that men and women and boys and girls from all walks of life would be drawn to you. Embolden every pastor and leader and teacher to proclaim truth from the platforms you've provided. We are called to please you, an audience of one. May we never seek the approval or applause of any other. Strengthen us according to your word. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Hey, thank you for staying with me all the way to the end. I hope you've been helped and encouraged and are less puzzled. Be intentional to educate yourself on this topic. It's not going away. Find the clarity that you need. Be connected to others of like precious faith. May we encourage one another and stand together for righteousness. Above all, let the Holy Spirit flow through you to influence those and the culture in which God has placed you for such a time as this. I love you and I'll see you next week.